tell y'all about beefing. Gee whiz, you guys. You act like you're from the ghetto. Oh, my bad. This is another highly requested one, and I was surprised since this movie is rarely talked about. But when I say that everybody and their mama was in this movie, child, I refuse to create all these pop-ups. It's a bit much, but this movie is a good one, and I forgot how hilarious it is. And all the familiar faces definitely give it a nostalgic vibe. We had MTV's Julie Brown and Adalys, Snoop and Luke, too many to name but with that being said while watching this movie i noticed some things and i have my thoughts but before we get to that it's time to recap so let's get into it as the movie starts we meet our main character lita who is an aspiring director fresh out of film school lita arrives at an office where she's interviewing for a director's assistant position these guys didn't care though. They lumped her right on in with the video girls auditioning for the latest Freddie B video. But one of the girls learned that she's an aspiring director. They throw their headshots and all types of info at her. They are gonna be real disappointed to find out that she has zero pull in the industry. Plus, Lita was slick judging them anyway. We also meet the director that Lita is looking to work under, Blue Kelly. Side note, this film is full of familiar faces from the 90s MTV era. I'm surprised this isn't an MTV film. But anyway, Blue was meeting with rapper Freddie B to discuss his upcoming video shoot. And Freddie B gave me major take that, take that vibes. Okay? Be there. Who is it? It's one of yours, Freddie. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> See what I mean? But Freddie B was trying to get over on Blue. Initially, Blue wanted 15K to get the video done. But Freddie was thinking much, much lower. Blue even signed Lita up to chaperone some random kids from Harlem to Miami for the video shoot without her consent. Just threw her to the wolves trial. Before leaving the office, Freddie B runs into Charity and he invites her to come down to Miami for the video shoot as well. He was selling her dreams from the start and she was all unsuspecting and wide-eyed, easy prey. Blue agreed to this shysty video shoot which would result in zero profit and Lita was so desperate for a job and experience that she agreed to do it for the low. We fast forward to Lita meeting the crew she will be chaperoning for this trip. We meet brother, the lady lover, who really needed to work on his charm. How about I nut in your mouth and not in your hands, huh? With lines like that, forget platinum. Your CD will go wood. We meet rap duo Tuesday and Blackie. Tuesday was brother's girl and she was possibly pregnant. We'll get to that later. We meet Casper and Indigo. Tell me why. After all these years, I just now noticed what he wore around his neck. These people can't be serious. <laughs> but Casper and Indigo had zero talent. Casper was going through an identity crisis as well. For some reason, he thought he could be half black due to his father, who he'd never met before, having the nickname of Panther. We'll come back to this later. We also meet Papa, the leader of this rowdy crew, and his brother, Geronimo. We'll just call him G for this recap. Lita was a bit overwhelmed by everyone, and it was safe to say G wasn't her cup of tea. Freddie B and Papa were childhood friends, and he agreed as a favor to have Papa's talented bunch come down to Miami for the video shoot. For some reason, G skates away while everyone's waiting for the bus. He runs into Peaches and Bird, who were always up to no good and wanted G to join in. Meanwhile, the crew thought their luxury bus had arrived, but no. The budget was much too low for that, but they could afford this piece of junk. Freddie B can't possibly be this broke or cheap. He probably spent more at the strip club. <laughs> As everyone is loading the bus, G is chilling in this car as Peaches and Bird rob a store. They come running out, making him their impromptu getaway driver. Meanwhile, everyone's noticing how the bus has a peculiar smell, and these bus drivers were a bit much. I know what funk is. We know funk. We've been on this bus 17 years. Roscoe, tell him what stank is. You ever smell a pig's ass? But there's some medicinal rewards, young lady. 
Peaches, Bird, and G get caught up at a police search point. G tries to convince them to let him hold the money until things die down, but they weren't with it. G ends up taking the money anyway and making a run for it. He makes it back to the bus, but not before Peaches catches up with him. Damn, Damn bitch! We spoke with Tyson? Peaches gun jams, giving him the time and opportunity to get back on the bus and get on the road. As their trip begins, Roscoe and Bo formally introduce themselves to the crew and give them the bus rules. And ain't no sexing each other up whoa, in here. Whoa, whoa. The man said no sexing each other up or freaking each other down. Brother didn't hear none of that because he starts loving up on Tuesday and trying to get her to go to the back of the bus for some loving. Meanwhile, Peaches and Bird stole another whip and were zeroing in on G's location the best way they could. Casper and Indigo were still bickering and their jokes were kind of cringe too. You're so black, your mama's scared to let you play in the street because you're blending with the pavement. Disappear with your silly little black guy. You sweat oil. You sweat bleach. <laughs> Again, Casper was convinced that he had a little seasoning. He was determined to locate his dad when they got to Florida and prove that he was half black. Meanwhile, Tuesday had to go to the bathroom, so it was time to finally take that pregnancy test. But that didn't go as planned because Indigo blew up the bathroom, literally and figuratively, and went back to his seat like nothing happened with his gross ass and Tuesday wasn't even out of view for a full minute before brother tried to put moves on charity and Tuesday was pissed rightfully so but brother knew how to manipulate you don't want people to know that I'm your lady it is baby it's just not for the rest of this trip though straight up I'm trying to get paid and everything was all good for him until Tuesday tried to play the same game I'm gonna just find myself somewhere. Don't act stupid, all right? Papa and Blackie tried to encourage Tuesday to leave and told her she deserved better, but she didn't want to hear it. Even Lita chimed in, but Tuesday was convinced that brother did love her. In her mind, he had his own little way of showing it. They eventually make a stop at a gas station to rest and eat. They pillaged this store. You would have thought they were on supermarket suite the way they ran through this store and grabbed everything. And while the others were in the store, Charity decided it was time to leave since this wasn't her type of crowd. Which is funny, because she had been entertaining brother the whole time. But Lita tried to convince her to stay. And when that didn't work, Lita did some reverse psychology. If you're not willing to do whatever it takes to succeed, why should I care? Bon voyage. Have a great trip. Wait a minute, Lita. Listen. Mommy, I was only kidding. Meanwhile, Peaches and Bird were back on road, still searching for G. The crew has a spontaneous jam session in front of the store. We get a song selection from Blackie, who had a beautiful voice, by the way. Then we get this lackluster rap from Charity, who should really stick to modeling. Brother, brother, you're so fine. Watch your hands on my behind. I'm a real woman can't make me cry. Of course, Tuesday doesn't respond well to this and sets it off on Charity, and all this commotion was too much for Lita. What I tell y'all about beefing? Gee whiz, you guys, you act like you're from the ghetto. Oh, my bad. While this was happening, Peaches and Bird had tracked the bus down. Ironically, G had spotted them as well, and when they walked away from the semi, he came behind them and took the keys. I really don't understand why he didn't get back on the bus from here. His silly self rode the back of the bus using his skateboard. One pothole and his ass would have been done for. The crew doesn't even notice he's not on the bus until Lita does roll call and he doesn't answer. Roscoe and Bo spot him riding the back of the bus and decide to have a little fun with him. How fast we going? About 50. Go 55. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do, Roscoe. Papa stops the bus, attempts to get on G's ass, and they resume their trip. It wasn't long before Peaches and Bird found some more wheels and met back up with the bus. They really kept up with this bus the entire time. That's so wild to me. But since G was having a hard time shaking Peaches and Bird, he had to admit what happened to Papa and the crew. Roscoe and Bo decide to step in and help by taking out Peaches and Bird's stolen van. Them helping was cool and all, but honestly... This bus was way too fragile for these type of activities. And even this didn't stop Peaches and Bird. At this point, 
I need to know how much money was in this bag. They were doing the most to get it. Say what we gonna do? You know the routine? Get our ass another cop. Papa and Lita get to know each other better. Papa heads a program called Rites of Passage that helps the neighborhood kids learn how to read, participate in martial arts, all the things, and Freddie B has chosen to invest in it. This adventure to Miami has encouraged some of the crew to have rather interesting dreams. Casper dreams of meeting his real daddy that just so happens to be black and a Black Panther. He wants to be seasoned so bad. Brother was dreaming about being the next Diddy. <laughs> Child. Let's not. The audacity of both of them to be cuddling and Tuesday is literally ceased down from them. Trifling work. The crew eventually makes another stop at a fair where G gets left yet again and has to get away from Peaches and Bird. He eventually gets his ass caught up in the backwoods. The crew eventually notices he's gone and plans to get to the next town and make some phone calls. Why didn't they just go back to where they were? He never been out of New York. This is the deep south we're talking about. Y'all better go back and get him. <laughs> the hell? The bus starts falling apart even more. The oil leaks out of the bottom, which forces them to make an unplanned stop in the middle of nowhere. Roscoe and Bo had to call in to order some equipment. So we got the yellow stuff coming out the radiator. See, we know what that's all about. Bo used some messing gale to, uh, to flush the engine. Messing gale potpourri is the best. I've gargled with that. My breath smell like a summer's day. Lita tries to cheer Papa up after losing G and insists that they will find him. Meanwhile, Tuesday finally took their pregnancy test and it didn't come out so good for her. Then she had to deal with Charity gloating. Two if you're pregnant, one if you're not. What? Charity insists that she doesn't have beef with Tuesday, despite entertaining Brother the whole trip, knowing that him and Tuesday had something going on. Brother and Charity was on some mess when it came to that, but Charity does remind Tuesday that Brother is not a good guy and she deserves better. Though Blackie didn't care for Charity, they see eye to eye when it came to Brother and his Playboy ways. From here, Charity, Blackie, and Tuesday were cool. The crew eventually end up at a barnyard boogie. G hitches a ride with this guy and shows up at the blue, catching Papa and Lita getting close on the dance floor. He confronts them and runs off, running into this guy, you might know him, and insults him, which turns into a beatdown of epic proportions, which was eventually stopped by these two. Yes, Peaches and Bird caught up to them yet again. I'm convinced they put a tracker in their bag and everybody bands together to confront them. I don't appreciate you broke ass Bonnie and Clyde, Ren and Stimpy, and looking motherfuckers coming down to my shit getting with my program like that. Slim, fuck you, you tall, linky ass, southern fried Bama ass bitch. And they finally get caught. Child, they've only crossed several state lines at this point. Anyway, the bus gets fixed, but now they owe $500 to the mechanic. And since G had all that spare money in the bag, he handed it over. That was a huge wad. Did he even count it? And was that all the money? I know Peaches and Bird didn't do all that for $500. They finally make it to Miami and the hotel was suspect as hell. Freddie B had to be in a wicked 360 deal because the budget for all of this was in the dumps. It was non-existent. Papa tries to get down to business about the seed money Freddie B promised, but Charity interjects to get Freddie B's attention. And brother was hurt. Polo tink tink. But it didn't take long before Charity got to experience what goes down in the business. She thought that Freddie B was interested in making her a star when he only wanted to add her to his hit list. And she went for it. Papa comes up to Lita's room and asks her to walk with him so they can talk. This walk lasted all night and they had to do a walk of shame back to her room in the morning, which didn't go unnoticed. Good morning to you too. You dirty dog, you. What? Where have you been at? Later, Casper expressed to Indigo his fears of meeting his dad. I liked the genuine interaction here. I can't be no white boy, man. I don't know how to be no white boy. Look, man, it doesn't even matter anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's skin deep, man. Yeah, I hear you. All right? Yeah. I'm glad he finally took the lock off. Can't be in the South with that mess on, because somebody would take it as a sign to capture his ass and put him to work. Charity wakes up full of regret. When she comes down to greet him, Freddie B tells Charity, Blackie, and Tuesday 
that he planned to make them a group and had even scheduled a photo shoot for them. Charity did not like the idea and let it be known, and Freddie B didn't hesitate to put her in her place. What about last night? Oh, that was just a friendly fuck. A friendly fuck? No, no, no. And now it was time for Tuesday to show her some grace. Meanwhile, Papa had grown tired of trying to hunt Freddie B down for his seed money. He finally confronted him and put him in his place. But don't try to string me along like I'm one of your bitches. My bitches? All right. Just chill. As the video shoot is happening, Brother tries to put moves on Charity, who rejects him swiftly. Then he tries to go back to Tuesday, who didn't want his ass either. She had a surprise for him, though. I gotta tell you something, I'm pregnant. Pregnant? Brother goes on to say the familiar, it's not mine, I'm not claiming it, yada yada, what you'd expect to play it like Brother to say, and Tuesday was cool with it. Enough bastards like you in the projects without me having another one. What? Tuesday finally gets her power back and pushed Brother back in the pool. Freddie B decided to get in line with Papa and kicked Brother out of the crew since he didn't follow the guidelines of Papa's Rite of Passage program. Meanwhile, Casper came to terms with the fact that he was 100% white. While talking with Blue, Lita tried to convince her to have nicer accommodations for the crew on the way back to the city and Blue wasn't with it. She felt they should just be grateful for the chance to get out of the city. These people piss in their own project elevators. You know, you talk about these kids like they are shit, but you are quick to pimp them in your bullshit videos that make you rich and them look ignorant. Blue threatens to withhold her pay and storms off, but not too fast. The crew was on her ass since they didn't play about Lita or each other. Blue insisted that since they had no contract, they had nothing to complain about, and Charity stepped in with some facts. Verbal contract is recognized in a court of law. Oh. And I bet you heard that from some lawyer while you were sucking his dick. <laughs> the crew gives Blue an ultimatum. No Lita, no them, no video. And Blue was just fine with that until Freddie B stepped in and made things happen. And eventually this video gets made and Lita was the director. And in 90s movie fashion, we get character updates. Papa continues his rites of passage program in which G graduated from. TCB went platinum and somehow all of them dated Andre Risen and burned his house down three more times. Casper and Indigo were featured in Diddy's remix of Ebony and Ivory that went platinum too. Brother ended up with Latoya Jackson out of all the women in the world. Roscoe and Bo continued to drive around the country and Peaches and Bird ended up being cellmates because of course they did. And Lita directed her first feature film which ironically ended up being an adult film. Now Lita making adult films. <laughs> like, how did that even come about? And that's the end of the movie. And here are my final thoughts. Like I said before, this movie was kind of nostalgic for me. Seeing a Dallas and Julie Brown brought me back. If you were raised during the 90s era of MTV, then you definitely recognize their faces. And then we have Malik, Melissa, John Witherspoon, Kelly, Cedric, just so many people in this film to name, but this film was loaded with like familiar faces. Anyway, let's talk about these characters, child. Lita and Papa were being screwed over from day one. Blue played Lita with this job, had her chaperoning people from New York to Miami for little pay. That's 20 hours traveling with people you don't know. Freddie B was too cheap to pay Blue and that trickled down to the travel accommodations. Had these kids traveling in a raggedy bus with no heat or air and a broken toilet. Poor bus was falling apart the whole entire way. Then when they finally got to Miami, Freddie B was ignoring Papa's request for the seed money he was promised and Blue didn't want to provide better accommodations for them on their way back because she felt they should have been happy with what they were given. This whole assignment was a ripoff. They had to deal with G and his now you see me, now you don't antics. Oh, and him getting chased by Peaches and Bird. Let me find out they crossed how many state lines for $500. I sincerely hope G didn't give their mechanic all their money, child. Then they had to be a witness to Tuesday, Charity, and Brother's drama. Let's talk about this mess. Brother and Charity really irked me. For one, Brother was manipulative AF. He took one look at Charity and instantly wanted a break. Talking about, we together, but let's take a break while we on the road. Boy, stop. And then got mad at Tuesday when she wanted to be on the same type of time. 
And though Charity owed her nothing and brother should have been respectful of his own relationship, it's still crazy to me how Charity entertained him knowing that there was something going on between him and Tuesday. But karma hit her back with Freddie B. And if she knew brother wasn't a good dude for Tuesday, how did she not see Freddie B for what he was? Maybe she wanted to make it that bad. And I guess in the end, it worked for all of TCB because they went platinum and proceeded to date the same guy, child. And how in the world did Lita go from directing music videos to directing adult films? <laughs> that pipeline was random AF. I'm pretty sure that is not what she had in mind when she graduated from NYU. All in all, this is still a good movie with a nostalgic feel. Though the movie is a short one, it's only an hour and 24 minutes. With everything that happens throughout, it doesn't feel that way at all. Anyway, that's it for this review. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. There won't be another video next week because it'll be my birthday and us Leos gotta enjoy our season, you know? But I won't be gone for long. Plus, there's some random videos I have in the works. See you next time, you guys. Bye.